The Quinnell sawmill will operate 16 hours a day. It's a three-line mill, eight dry kilns here. We have four debarkers. We're probably the largest operating facility in British Columbia. A mill is a dangerous place. There are some pretty nasty situations that we can deal with, potential hazards we can't even see. We don't know what'll happen. We're very proud of our safety systems and our training, the things that we do with our employees. We train and train and train, but we still seem to have incidents. Going into the machines, we have to be very aware of what is going on, if there is an upset condition, what the potential hazards are. The hydraulic pressures, the air pressures, the, the suspended loads, or the entrapped energy in something that's jammed up or bound up, it's hidden in a lot of circumstances like that. It's not obvious, you've blocked the machine out, you've shut everything down, but there's still a hazard there that you're not necessarily aware of. The danger with kinetic energy is that you have a rotating mass, whether it's a saw or a chipper head or a disc, that's still turning and it takes a while for them to come to a complete stop. In this facility, in November of 2017, we had an amputation. My first inspection here was where I was responding to a serious incident to a worker due to kinetic energy. We have these amazing lockout policies. We have all the procedures, all the signage. We're supervising our workers, but we've missed the step of addressing kinetic energy because it's different than electrical energy. It needs different controls. That's really when the seed was planted here about safeguarding and kinetic energy and making sure that heads and saws are stopped before people do a production or a maintenance activity. Meg was originally our head safety resource and we actually got a grant for the initial assessment of our canter. West Fraser approached MAG, shared the incident with, uh, with the MAG members, and MAG saw it as an opportunity to try to help West Fraser and to get some learnings for the industry as a whole. So MAG said, yep, yeah, we'll give part of our budget over to that initiative, and West Fraser will lead it. We had some ideas, we had some thoughts. We brought in two different consultants. We talked to suppliers. This is what the perimeter guarding needs to look like. This is where we need to put gates for direct access for maintenance purposes or production purposes. What kind of controls did we need at each one of those gates to control entry? It is a process to work through. With this project, uh, what West Fraser did is they took their traditional lockout procedures and traditional forms of safeguarding and added another element to them. The real sort of fundamental change is the addition of the electronic safeguard that's monitoring the primary breakdown line, the canter. And so that's the sort of fundamental difference. It's not zero energy, it's when it senses zero movement is when it will unlock the gate and allow a worker to enter. We did our number one canter as a pilot project. It's been a bit of a challenge. We hope to have it going sooner than we had, but we got it operational in September of 2018. For the most part, the system is all behind the scenes. Besides the gates and the guards, you don't see anything. It's all in the electrical equipment. We monitor all the EMF feedback on all the motors for rotation, and then if there's still rotating energy there, even though the motor has come to a stop, we use proxies to monitor the cutting head to make sure that it has come to a complete stop before we allow entry. This new system won't let you make those mistakes. You can't improperly lock out. If you improperly lock out, you can't perform your maintenance. It's like having somebody watching over you so that if you do miss something, it's a reminder. You've missed a step or there's still a hazard in there. It won't let you take a calculated risk. Humans make errors and this system is catching it. I think the employees have really embraced this whole thing. There's, a, I think, a great sense that you know we've taken steps to make it that much safer. When that gate opens, they feel a sense of comfort that they're going into something that's really at zero energy. 
Having this new safeguarding system makes me feel safer, absolutely. If I'm going into that piece of equipment, that this process is working. It just seems like the way to go. It's just the next step in safety. I've seen a change in the workers. They have a lot of pride in their areas and where they work and what they do and what they've accomplished because it is a pretty big hurdle. I think what West Fraser did here is they put that physical guard in between the worker and the hazardous energy source. And I believe that all other companies could do that too. Why not? I think what's exciting about this initiative is even though it came from some really unfortunate circumstances, it's a great example of industry coming together and working together to solve an important problem. MAG's excited about the possibility of utilizing this technology to further advance safety in the sector. Anyone that's going forward with this lockout process or this safeguarding, include everyone, your maintenance staff, your operators, your supervisors. Get everybody's input on it. As a manager, I don't want people to be injured. I think this was an opportunity for us to show everybody that this can be done. We can't be afraid to make these changes because they're good for everybody. They're good for our employees, they're good for the company, and it's good for the industry. Mm -hmm.